Today I'm going to be presenting uh, From Zero to Hero, Launching Your Own Game in 45 Minutes. Um, I'm going to give a quick intro about what we're talking about today. Um, then we're going to dive into the architecture of what we're building. Um, we're going to dive into the client and what that would look like. Um, and then we're going to hop back to the server and look at what our server-side implementation of our game looks like uh, and some of the data structures we use to power that. Then we're going to deploy and show how we'll run this in the cloud, um, game together, and then do a quick recap. So about me, I'm a founding engineer at Momento. Uh, Momento is a startup uh, where we're empowering engineers to move faster and build better experiences for their customers. And the way we do that is by building a serverless platform that works for companies of any s size and in any cloud. Um, and our first two products that we launched to help with that is a serverless cache and a serverless pub sub service that we call Topics. And I'm going to be using some of those today as well to power our game. Um, I'm a recent AWS community builder. Um, I've been using Go for about five years on and off. Um, so awesome to be here. This is my first time speaking at GopherCon. Um, I'm actually from San Diego, and so super excited to be here. Um, uh, please connect with me. This is a uh, QR code you can scan to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and GitHub, as well as my, uh, the code we use today to run this will be in GitHub as well. Um, this was actually originally supposed to be uh, a workshop, and so we've converted it to a talk as well. So super excited to be here and, and sharing with you all. Okay, so why this talk? Um, I think more games should be built in Go. Um, very commonly, I see a lot of games being built with their backends in .NET, and it makes me sad because I really like Go, and I'd love to see more, more games being built in Go. Um, the, the language is great for scaling both your team uh, and being productive, uh, as well as your systems. So it's, it's a really great choice for building a backend. Um, and building games is fun. Um, you know, like I mentioned, you know, this talk uh, was originally supposed to be a workshop, um, and I wanted everyone to kind of come out of it uh, with a hands-on uh, prototype that they could then deploy into their own account and start iterating and build their own games. Um, I think games are a really fun way to, to run into problems that you might not normally see at your everyday coding tasks that you're doing at work. Um, and oftentimes, when you're doing tasks at work and you're coding, it's not necessarily always the most fun thing. Um, and so I think it's important to, you know, on the weekends, try to build some games um, to, to still have fun with coding as well uh, on the side of work. Um, and so I'm not a game developer by trait. I've worked mainly in cloud and working with services. Um, um, but I do like on the weekends to, to dabble in games uh, just to continue to have more excuses to write Go on the side. So what are we building? Uh, we're going to be build, building a cooperative idle game called Feed the Gopher. So uh, can I get a show of hands? Has anyone heard of Cookie Clicker? Yes. OK. <laughs> I've done so many times I've brought that up, and no one ever knows what it is. So I'm super happy to see a few hands. I, I, it's really. Awesome. <laughs> so this is a, a similar uh, idle game, um, similar to, cook to Cookie Clicker, but we're going to be feeding a gopher, because uh, it's gopher con. Um, and we're going to be competing with friends to see who can feed the gopher the most. And then you can automate uh, a feeding empire to maximize the growth of your, of your gopher as well. Um, it's going to include a couple features, a leaderboard, uh, player chat, uh, rate limiting, uh, as well as some player upgrades as well. So the client overview, um, just I'm not a UI developer, so I <laughs> it's pretty basic. So please be nice. And the chat GPT helped me with a bit of this as well. So, um, But it's a single page static uh, HTML page, which just tried to be really simple just to kind of show the ideas. Um, we're going to have a feed button, which is actually the picture of the gopher. So when you click on the gopher, you'll be manually feeding them. Um, it's going to include a leaderboard, which you can see on the right, uh, a chat UI, which you can see on the left. Uh, and some auto feeder upgrades that you can buy down at the bottom. Um, our architecture is is really simple. Um, I wanted to just make something that was very versatile that you could deploy and run the same pattern like locally or in a cloud or in AWS or in GCP. Um, but today I'm going to be focusing on AWS, um, and I was actually 
running this with AWS App Runner, which is a new service by AWS, uh, relatively new, that lets you just run a simple container and it takes care of most of the kind of details for you around running your service. So it sets up like a load balancer, an auto scaling group, um, and kind of just abstracts away a lot of the, the details about infrastructure. Um, and then we're going to be using a Memento Cache and a Memento Topic to power some of the functionality in the games today, um, which is really nice because, you know, we have a on-demand pricing model. So when you're not having, you know, players playing your game or are using it, um, you're not going to be paying for it, which is we wanted this to be a cheap thing you could run on your own as well. Um, and it is on AWS App Runner, but very similar to like Google Cloud Run. And so if you wanted to run it on like Google Cloud Run, let me know after the talk and I can show you what you need to change to do that as well. Um, quick layout. Um, so we're going to be mainly focusing on the back end in this talk. I um, don't want to show you too much of my front end code, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, and uh, we're going to have a couple of APIs to, that are powering this game. We're going to have a game controller and a chat controller. Um, for our game, we're going to have a feed, which is the manual feed uh, feeding the gopher. We're going to have a top feeders endpoint, which will power the leaderboard. We're going to have a build auto feeder uh, API to build our player upgrades and, and enable that auto feeding experience. Uh, a, an API to read the, how many auto feeders you have. And then two chat APIs, one to send messages and one to connect and actually receive uh, messages from your chat service. Um, so the first thing we're going to focus on is a leaderboard. Um, uh, and our leaderboard is going to be powered by a sorted set, which is a common data structure used to power these types of leaderboard experiences. Uh, and, a, and a sorted set has a set of members that are unique. Um, and the key part that makes it uh, a sorted set is it has each member has a score associated with it and a rank associated with the, with the uh, based off that score as well. So it'll stay in, in sorted order and allow you to power things like a leaderboard. And so you can see here, here's our leaderboard. I have Goldie with 290 points and Ellery with 210 points. And you can see Goldie's first and I'm second. So let's dive right in. Um, the first API we're going to implement is actually our manual feed API. Um, so the, you can see here, pretty simple. Um, we're going to have a request come in. We're going to decode our request and grab the user uh, name from that request. This is a very simple game. There's not auth, so we're just blindly trusting everyone who types in their username for it. Um, so you can actually share teams <laughs> with this game. Um, and then we call sorted set increment score. So we have a sorted set named scoreboard that represents all our players. And for each uh, time a request comes in, we're going to increment the, that user's value in that sorted set by one. The next API we're going to implement is the actual API that powers that leaderboard. So similarly, we're going to have a uh, top feeders API request that comes in. And we're going to actually fetch uh, that same scoreboard s sorted set. And we're going to say, get me the members by score in descending order and get me uh, top 100. So I'm fetching the top 100 for this game. Um, but you can increase that or get top 10 or, or others. Um, and that's going to return us a list of the members of our set and their scores. So then we loop through that, we build up a JSON response, and we return that to our client. And that's it. That's all you needed to actually implement a, a leaderboard. So not very much code. Um, really easy to just jump in and get going. Uh, and it's a very powerful concept. And that can actually be used for lots of different um, applications, even other than leaderboards as well. Next thing we're going to jump into is our chat. So starting at the client, um, we're going to have a really basic WebSocket connection uh, that's going to open up with our API to actually power receiving messages. Um, we're going to have a ba really, really basic chat UI. Uh, it's just a box, and we're going to just append messages as they come in. Uh, and then we're going to have a send message that you can send a button down at the bottom there. Um, our implementation for send message, again, pretty simple. Um, we're actually going to be using a topic for this, which is a, a similar to a pub sub concept where you can publish messages to this topic, and all the subscribers to that topic will receive all those messages. 
So for our send message, we're just going to, again, decode the, the send message API and then publish a message on our topic. Um, uh, it's called primary chat room. And for this game, we just really simple have a uh, hard-coded chat room called, or topic called primary chat room. Uh, but those are uh, very ephemeral and you can create them. They're very lightweight. So you can see, imagine how in another game you might have, like per battle, you might have a chat room or per clan or group, you might have a chat room. So you can create lots of these. Um, they're very lightweight uh, concepts and, and power lots of different chat rooms, which is often how we see people using these. Uh, but for this game, we're just going to have a simple single chat room for our one uh, feed the gopher room. Um, and you can see for each message we're publishing, we're just building up a string message of the user that sent the message and the value that they're trying to send. Okay, so this next implementation is a little more complicated, so we're going to take some time and talk through it. This is actually the Chat Connect um, uh, API handler. And so our client's going to be opening a WebSocket connection to, to drive receiving these messages. Um, and it's going to, as long as that WebSocket connection to our server is open, we're going to continually just try to read messages off that topic. And any new topic that, or any new message that comes in on that topic, we're going to broadcast that down to our client as well. Um, so you can see here, the first thing we do is we actually just upgrade the request to a WebSocket connection uh, so that we can keep it alive and keep sending messages to that user. Then we're going to instantiate a topic subscription, uh, again, for that primary chat room. Um, and then as long as that connection's open, we're going to just keep looping and reading items off that subscription. So whenever a new item comes in, we will grab the value and publish it back to the client WebSocket connection. Um, and I wanted to only show Go code, but I did want to just show a little bit of JavaScript um, just to show like the client implementation uh, in JavaScript of that WebSocket code. Um, it's really, there's not very much there. Um, so just wanted to show it because there's not a lot of magic happening. Um, we create a basic WebSocket and on message, every time we receive a message, we're just appending it to the top of that uh, chat box that you saw earlier. Um, and then we have a key press event as well um, to listen uh, for when someone hits enter and then we'll send a message as well. Okay, so even with just those basic um, just these basic API implementations, you already kind of have a, a basic game, right? You could have everyone manually feeding the gopher, and you would have a leaderboard. So it's enough to have a basic game, um, but we can add a little bit more to make it more interesting, as well as add some protections in and rules to make the game a little more fun for, for everyone. So the next thing we're going to talk about is actually uh, rate limiting. So Oftentimes, you'll see in games, it's really important to implement limits and rules in your games to not only protect your users and their experience, um, but also your servers. You know, oftentimes with games, you'll have people who try to abuse those games or the, the your rules. And so, uh, one very powerful tool to do to help uh, enforce some rules is a rate limiter. And so, for this game, we're actually going to implement a rate limiter for our manual feed API so that you can only feed the gopher manually 60 times a second. Um, I know this is GopherCon, so as soon as we have someone start playing this, I'm sure someone's going to pull open their laptop and, and start just spamming that manual feed uh, endpoint from their, their, their terminal. And so we want to try to protect a little bit and make sure that you know, whoever has the fastest computer doesn't win. Um, so we're going to put a rate limit on as well. Uh, and the way a rate, um, there's kind of a few different approaches to, to do this, but the approach we're going to do today is uh, a basic token bucket. So every time a user request comes in, we're going to add a token uh, to, this, to this bucket and then check, is this bucket full? Um, if it is, we're going to block the request. And if it's not, we'll allow it to continue. And we're going to be setting up this token bucket so that every interval, every n seconds, it's going to age out and reset. So what does that look like in practice? We have this feed rate limit uh, function that's called before we invoke the rest of our controller for the uh, feed API. And we're actually going to be using a dictionary uh, data structure for this, this token bucket. And every time a user request comes in, 
each user is going to have a dictionary with their user ID and rate limit. And then the field in that dictionary is going to have the name of the API that we're trying to rate limit. And we're going to increment it by one. And here you can see we're actually setting the TTL on this item or this bucket to 60 seconds. Um, and we're not refreshing it. So every time these requests come in, they'll add up these, these counters in your, your user rate limit dictionary. And then after 60 seconds, it'll age out and reset in the token bucket resets. And obviously, that's all tweakable. So you, know, you can set uh, a faster reset rate or give people more allowance or set it over five minute interval. Um, so really just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, the reason I put it all in one dictionary is it might be nice eventually also to do like an overall rate limit versus a granular API limit. So it allows you to you know, just grab all the, the current rate limits for that user. Um, then you know, if we get back you know, an increment success, we, part of that response actually is the new value of that counter. So then we can check it against a threshold. So for this game, I just set it to 60 requests per minute, so basically about one transaction per second per user. Um, so if you can't, if you start clicking more than that, you'll get a little alert that says, "Whoa, there! Slow down! This gopher can only eat so fast." Um, okay. So the next bit we're going to go into is the auto feeders. Um, and I'm not going to dive into all the code on this. Um, but this is really the core of what makes this an idle game. Like I said, you could build a game where you're just all manually feeding the gopher, but that gets old pretty quickly, and your, your wrist might get tired, your laptop might break. And so you want to actually enable some player upgrades to really bring the idle piece of the game into, the, into it. And so we're going to allow you to build different buildings. Um, and the way this is going to be powered then is we'll have a backend task that runs every 60 seconds. And we'll look at what auto feeders a player has built. And it will try to increment their score on that shared leaderboard based off how many auto feeders they've built. Um, one thing we're also doing here that's important is as we scale out the service, if we go back to that architecture diagram, we really want to keep our service tier stateless so that we can scale that out um, without having to uh, worry about state within that, those servers. And so we're going to have a lease or a lock as well that this task, when it wakes up, tries to obtain. Um, so it prevents multiple containers from doing this task at once. OK, so now talking about our infrastructure. Um, I was going to set up a bit more and actually show you infrastructure's code with, with Golang, um, either using CDK or Pulumi. Um, but I wanted to actually just keep it as minimal as possible to really keep you focused on the game. I think one thing you'll realize with games often is it's not actually the coding part that's like the difficult part. It's getting players and making a game that's like fun to play. And so I think when you're, especially when you're starting off, the more you can abstract a way out and not have to deal with, the better. Um, and so we're actually using AWS App Sync, or sorry, AWS App Runner uh, to, to run this. And we can power it just with this one YAML file. And you can see we're going to be using the Go runtime. Um, and the, we're just going to be building our package, our, our main API package, and then just running that build file. So super easy. Um, really a lot happening for you under the hood there. And it's definitely a very generic pattern that can be abstracted out uh, into other infrastructure as code or runtimes, whether that be containers, a Lambda, EC2, or different clouds as well. OK, awesome. So let's game. So I did want to show you really quick um, the working demo. And I'm not going to put the shared version up yet till after the talk. I was thinking about it before I came up here. Um, you know, I, didn't, I don't have a lot of moderation tools in this chat yet, uh, or how you can name it. So I figured. <laughs> Since this is filmed, maybe we'll keep the, the collaborative play to after the, the talk. Um, but you can see here, we've started off our server. Um, we have a basic chat window here for Ellery, um, and another one here for Bob. So Ellery can say, hey, Bob. Let me, oops, I can start this over, Ellery. So, hey, Bob. And we 
we got over here and we can say, hey, Ellery. And so forgive the Wi-Fi uh, at the hotel. It's a little slow, but we'll, we'll get it going here. And that pops up as well. And you can see here um, my character, Ellery. I can start feeding the gopher. So I'm going to click here and start feeding it. And you can see uh, the points for my gopher increasing on the leaderboard here. Um, and then if I come over here to Bob, I can also start feeding this gopher. And you'll see Bob will show up. And we can compete here and start competing and, and seeing who can feed the gopher the fastest. Um, again, this is a, a little bit of a simple game. It's, it's a simple idea, but these, these concepts are very powerful. Um, and you can use these for a lot of different types of games as well. Um, so really quickly here, like, we'll try to see if we can max out our, our rate limit. So I'll just keep hitting here. We'll keep trying to feed the gopher faster and faster and faster. And eventually, we'll see if we can break our rate limiter here. Or break my demo would be the other one. <laughs> So we'll have to get up to 60 here in, in a minute. And very soon, we should see our rate limiter kick in and prompt us to say, hey there, slow down. Uh, stop feeding that, that gopher so quick. Maybe. OK. We'll see. It seems like my internet's breaking out here. So keep going. OK, whoa there, partner, slow down. You can only feed that gopher so fast. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, so now, too, you can see I have 215 points. So we can actually spend and uh, buy some uh, upgrades. So the first upgrade I'm going to be at build is this carrot auto feeder. So we can buy this. And now, behind the scenes, what's happening is every time this runs, we're going to be, every minute, we're going to be getting uh, auto-feeding points given to our gopher. So I can now step away, and it truly is an idle game that's uh, getting points behind the scenes. So a quick recap of what we've covered. Um, this is a really simple game, but these primitives are super powerful. Um, if you look at a lot of really popular games today, like think mobile games, um, these concepts of a leaderboard, counters, um, locks, um, pub sub are super powerful. And they power a ton of games today. So for example, a sorted set, we're using it for a leaderboard. It can also be used for things like a priority queue or a waiting room to like upgrade players that you want to get into the game. Um, dictionaries can be used for like user session info. We're using them for a rate, rate counter. But often, you can use this for like a temporary session data for a user. Um, counters can be used. We're using them for keeping track of feeding. Um, but you know they can be used for things like analytics. Think about collecting uh, analytics about every action a user's taken in that game, and then flushing those out somewhere for longer term storage. Um, sets used for just keeping um, you know, a single set of, of items in the source of truth there. Um, you know, so, th so very powerful. Again, a dictionary oftentimes can be used to represent a map. Or if I actually, if anyone attended the Gno Land talk or workshop the other day, um, they actually represented a chess game in a, in a list as well. And so we do have a list data structure also. Um, so if you get clever, you can use these data structures to represent a lot of different types of games um, and, and really scale that to, to, to any number of users. Um, it's never been easier to build a game um, in, in history, in my opinion. You know, anyone can now come and, and build a game on the weekend that can scale and to hundreds of thousands or millions of users even. Um, and you can compete with pretty much any gaming studio, right? Like, I think that's been something that's up and up and throughout history is getting easier and easier and easier. And so it's a great pastime, I think, as an engineer, especially if your day-to-day -day job is working on like uh, REST APIs or web services or security services. It's really fun to be able to just unwind and, and remind yourself like why you got into coding in the first place on the weekends. Um, and also, you can actually make some money on games as well. So it's a really great pastime to try to like hack away on the side. 
uh, and now you have lots of primitives to get up and running in a really easy way um, for very che cheap also. Um, so again, building games is fun, especially in Go. So everyone should be uh, really trying to, to push this, the community in Go and, 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 and build more games in Go. Um, and, and hopefully we don't see as many .NET games in the future. I, you know, <laughs> I think one thing with this talk I was a little nervous about was uh, I have submitted this before the whole Unity uh, debacle. And I was <laughs> a lot of people were coming up and like, so you're going to build a whole game and go uh, and, and build you know, to replace Unity? I was like, no, I'm not going to be doing that. We're just going to be focusing on the back end. Um, but I think because of that, and that's such a popular engine, you see a lot of back end development being done in, in .NET as well. Which, again, no, no hate on .NET, but I, I really do love Go, and I think it's a really good opportunity um, to, to really you know, use the language in a way you might not use it every day. Okay, so quick talk. Um, ended a little early, but thank you guys so much. This is my first uh, time speaking at GopherCon. Um, all this code is available online. Um, and uh, really appreciate checking it out. Please connect and follow up. If you have a game idea that you would like to build or try out, come find me. I'd love to hear it. I love hearing about everyone's crazy ideas. Um, you know, we built a pretty simple idle game today called Feed the Gopher. Um, but you know, I'd love to hear how you can think about using these primitives in in a uh, in a, a different type of game as well. Be that a tower defense game. Uh, a battle game or, or, uh, or an RPG style. Um, so pretty much everything other than like a first person shooter game engine type game. Um, most games can be powered off these primitives if it's not like a real time uh, game. Awesome. Thank you so much.